Hello, everyone. Apparently, the other day there was a huge crash from Windows. Funnily enough, I forgot to turn on my laptop that day, so I didn't notice. But it really brings me back to the conversation I was having with you before, where I said that we need to have some non-digital stuff. So, for example, have things stored digitally and have them stored in multiple places. For example, if you can get your important stuff on a USB drive, but also put them in multiple storage places if you can. Here is what I remember that's free. Google has 15 gigabytes of storage. Dropbox has 2 gigabytes. OneDrive has 5 gigabytes. Mega has 20 gigabytes. By the way, Apple also has 5 gigabytes for free, but the lowest paid plan is only 99p and you can get 50 gigabytes and that's what I use to store my videos while I'm preparing to render them. By the way, I am not sponsored by Apple. Surely there is at least one of those that would suit you before you had to pay. Also. I'm not saying that regarding the important things like medical records and flight plans that we need to go back to the Stone Age, but there should be a digital copy and a physical copy, and I know that's going to be annoying to have files in the back of a hospital, but if there was a fire, you have your digital copy, and if there's a virus or a crash, you have your physical copy. Because when it comes to something like medical records, you can't mess about. Let's imagine for a second that my cat is human and he is affected by what happened. He is deathly allergic to nuts and he's also allergic to coconut. Also, let's just imagine that he doesn't speak English. However, that was in his notes, but they're all on the computer. Imagine that the crash happened and everything is digital and the nurse gives him a Snickers bar or a Bounty bar. Would she be liable if he had a reaction? Or imagine his sister who had an enlarged heart and so got tired really easily. Hospitals love to get you up and walking as soon as you can. So imagine if Sylvie was up and walking too much. They catch her sitting down. They think she should do more. She overexerts herself and dies. But they wouldn't do that if they'd read her records and saw her heart condition. And yes, they could just ask the patient because these ones luckily are conscious. But A, they don't speak English and B, what if the patient isn't? Going back to the flight situation, my solution is that you should always have the written timetable on something non-digital just in case. Then the flights will not be delayed. Don't put all your eggs in one basket because by the time that you do that, if something goes wrong and something knocks the basket and they all crack and fall on the floor, what are you going to do then? Also, with the hospital situation, there should at least be some staff who are trained with the offline stuff and how to sort and organise the files. Because when this happens, which it will happen again, what will happen next? So you should have your physical copy in case of a virus and a digital copy in case of a fire. And you should have multiple digital copies in case one of your storage places dies and gets hacked or something. Especially if you're in important place like a hospital or public transport. I don't know if this is possible, but I think this would be a good idea. If you could write down, say, if you're a doctor, the patient's notes, and then scan it into the digital system, therefore saving you having to write it twice. Maybe I've been watching too many sci-fi movies, but if it's possible, I think it should be implemented. Me personally, I just hope that no planes fell out of the sky, and I'm kind of glad I'm a hermit. There are some things that cannot be done the old-fashioned way, like lifts, for example. That caused so many deaths that that has to stay digital. But if the lift is not working, use the stairs.
Think about the aeroplane situation. They used to have a physical timetable. Same with the buses. Also, hospitals used to have a clipboard with your nose at the end of your bed. I haven't been to a hospital in a while, so I wouldn't know if they still have this, but I definitely feel that very important industries like the hospitals should have a physical and digital copy, or at the very least have multiple storages like Dropbox and OneDrive in case one goes down. Maybe have some staff know how to deal with the non-digital stuff, and maybe the young ones only deal with the digital stuff. Also, due to the aeroplane situation, how awful is it having to cancel the planes? An idea would be to prepare physical timetables just in case of an emergency and have them on standby. It may not be possible. Maybe I'm speaking with my head in the clouds, but some people didn't get to their destination on time, and I think this is a good idea. Maybe a tannoy of... The plane will be leaving at 10 o'clock. Because then the flights could have carried on. So my thought is to make sure that you use multiple backup devices, not just one. And one thing that I end up doing is I save some of my things in an email so that even if their storage goes down, you may still be able to use your email and find the things you need in there. Maybe put it in multiple emails and save it there just in case. Just make sure you don't send it to anyone. But on a serious note, we need to make sure that this doesn't happen again because someone could die because of it. But on a serious note, we need to make but on a serious note, we need to make sure that this doesn't happen again because someone could die because of it. As I said, what if someone has an illness that needs to be sorted but you can't see it? What if someone needs to go somewhere because of health emergencies to save their life but they can't because the planes aren't running? Also, digital can be hacked. Physical cannot. So once you give your information to other people to look after, things can go wrong. If you want to get rid of something physical, light a match or soak it in some water. Even if you do that to a hard drive, it's still going to be there somewhere, especially if you put it on the internet. Also, I don't think it's too bad of an idea to keep a tin box under your bed with a little cash in it. The only people who will know about it are the people whom you bought the box from, but they're not going to know where you keep it nor the combination. However, if someone hacks into your bank account and steals your money, you have nothing. So I'm not saying we should completely go back to the Stone Age where you have conspiracy theories where people in tinfoil hats hide all their money under the bed because it's good to keep your money in the bank but also keep saving some in the house and don't put all your eggs in one basket. What I would suggest is have a money jar where you save a certain amount. When it hits that, put that in the bank and start again. So regarding putting all your eggs in one basket, imagine that you've done that, someone comes along, they knock the back of your basket and some eggs drop on the floor. Some are going to crack, some may remain unscathed and some of them may have a hairline crack that you don't see that damages over time. Here is something to get your mind ready for preparing for an emergency. There was a time when I was sitting in my bedroom and I smelt steam. I didn't recognise it as steam. I didn't know what it was, but I definitely smelled some hot vapour. No one was panicking, so I didn't think anything of it. Until the cat bursts into my room and starts screaming at me. He yowls at me to come. Then he yowls at Jack to come. And then he bolts toward the front door, also trying to get my mum to come as well on the way out. And is about to go back to Nana and ask her to come with him because he thinks there's a fire. When he realises that she's the cause because she's ironing. If he has a fire plan that he has tested multiple times, then I think we can prepare multiple things 
just in case. By the way, the reason why he didn't go for my brother or for his sister is because they are and were the fastest out of all of us, so they would have got there before us all. He just has to scream at them, but he definitely looked out for the weaker ones of us, that being me, Mum and Nana. My cat has a fire plan. Why are you disorganised? And no, I didn't train him to do that. He did that himself, completely out of fear. Also, think about this. People think that cats are very aloof and probably very much think of themselves. My cat thought of everyone in the family and has a plan to get everyone in specific order by screaming at them until they come and then leading them to the exit. He's nearly ten. How does he think of this? Does he think ahead or is it just that his instinct is to think of everyone so that even though he looks like he's sitting there grooming himself, he does actually care for everyone and he picks up the people who are not as fast and like, come with me, you decide. Anyway, those are my thoughts because hospitals get people from A to B and airports get people from A to B to B, along with any other public transport, so they should not be going down because of a crash. They should have some kind of emergency backup, even if it's one of those things that's annoying to have, but at least it's there. Anyway, you let me know your thoughts. If you're still here, then you're handsome, and you're beautiful, and you, well, I'm speechless. I'll let you know next time I see you. Over to the pets. Hello all, this is Sylvie. If you liked what you saw, then subscribe for more. Hey everyone, my name's Bonjo. If you enjoyed yourself, then give it a thumbs up and share it with all your friends. Hi everybody, I'm Jack, and if you had fun, then comment down below and let mum mum know if you were affected by the crash, and if so, what did you do?